Welcome back. I'm going to show you how to log in to the Oregon Administrative Rules Database as a rules writer. Uh, so you make sure you know your username and password. And we're going to go ahead and log in. Once in, uh, after your rules coordinator has given you access as a rules writer into the database, you should see the OERD link here. And based on your agency access, uh, you'll see different chapters. Um, most rules writers will only have access to one. There's a few agencies that are parent agencies that have minor subchapters, and so you might be one of the unique rules writers that delves into different chapters. Just make sure anytime you're logging in and doing work and drafting rules that you're correctly selecting uh, the, the chapter that you'd want to work in today. So today, for the example, we're going to log into Oregon State Archives. Once in, this is your dashboard, this is your home base, and so I'll explain a few things that you're going to see here. One of the first things you want to look at, um, you'll see that we're in the Oregon Administrative Rules Database, the name of it, and your role as rules writer, and then again, what chapter you're in, because that's very important. And here you'll see a couple welcome notes, um, and then we have several cues that I'd like to scroll through and show you. Um, this first one up on the left is your current chapter rules, and so these are going to be all the access of the divisions that your rules coordinator has given you access to. So it may not be every division in your chapter, it may be only the ones that you especially work in. If you're a content expert, for instance, uh, you may only have a handful, um, one or two, um, or maybe all of them, depends on how you work with rules. Um, so here you have the rules that you are able to, here are your current rules, and then you have the ability to start drafts. So if you look at the rule number, you see the title of the rules, and then you have the ability to start drafts. So the main role of the rules writer is to do this drafting of rule text. Um, so you can pick an existing rule or you can adopt a new rule. So that's a little bit about that queue. Going over here to the right, we see this other queue, uh, and these aren't current rules, these are current rule drafts. So everything that you've already started and everything everybody who has access to your chapter has started. Um, so explaining just what we see here in this queue, you're going to see one in this first column that has these little check boxes that say include. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but that's going to be how you include it um, to send it to your rules coordinator when you're all ready and done with your draft. Your role number and right below it is the access or the action that you'd like to take on it. And then here in this middle column where you see icons, it means you either have a PDF attachment with that rule or you have a little note, a little post-it note. And I'll get into that in a future video about what that post-it note is for. Uh, the date, the last time it was modified. Uh, and then over here we have the status and staff. This is uh, what has happened to this draft, the status it's in, and who's done it. So you're going to see quite a few names because if your agency has um, up to three rules coordinators and then however many rules writers they've chosen based on your program and how your agency functions, you'll see different names of rules writers as well. Uh, the difference between the roles, the main difference is that the rules writers have the ability to draft rules and send those to rules coordinators, whereas rule coordinators have the ability to do the drafts, collect drafts from you guys as rules writers, but also put all those draft rule texts on to filings. Um, so you'll be able to see the difference between those people there. And then depending on what status your filing or your rule is here, you'll be able to uh, do a few different things. Mostly we'll be able to view it. So let's just pick one right now. We'll go into one just to view one real quick. And this is just the view rule page. And uh, we'll get into this in a different video about how you draft your rule. Um, but just so you're seeing it here, you have two things you can do. You can either save this down as text, so if you need to give it to your advisory committee, your RAC, you can save it down, interested parties, it saves as an RTF, or you can just print it from that same menu. And then your other option is to return to dashboard. So we're gonna select that one. And we also have the option, if this is me, I'm Christy in this video, so I have the ability on the ones that I've drafted to also delete them. So say I started something, I get working on it, and we've decided to, as an agency to take a different approach, you can definitely delete them. Uh, once you delete it, it's a hard delete, so they go away, so just keep that in mind. Uh, but if you want to edit it, taking you back to a similar page, instead of viewing it, now you, as the author of this role, the creator, have the ability to make more changes. So you can come and go as you please as many times as you want to uh, 
work on your draft rule text. And see here we have a few more options uh, with our buttons on the bottom. We have the save as text, you'll see that on a lot of pages, return to dashboard, and now we have save because you've worked on it um, or you've just come in and double checked it and printed it or whatnot, you wanna save. And then send is when you're finally ready uh, as a rules writer, you think this draft is 100% A-OK, -okay, you can send it to your rules coordinator and let them know that you're ready for this to be included on a filing. Um, right now, we're going to return back to our dashboard and keep talking about the rest of the queues. And then down here at the bottom is kind of a special queue. So as rules writers, you draft rules and you're, you're a content expert and you're passing them on to a rules coordinator and they're putting on files, but you might want to pay attention to where they go after and uh, keep track of when they were submitted to Secretary of State or what happened after, um, when have they been effective, what kind of filing they're on, and that's the kind of thing that you're going to see here on the filings final queue. So while you can't actually put them on filings, you can watch where they go and keep track and then always view them. So just going through this queue real quick, uh, the file date, the administrative order number, that's what the archives uses to organize them, and you should see them in kind of descending order here. So you see 47, 46, all the way down, depending on how many agencies filings you have. Uh, caption is just the caption that was on the filing. And then the type of filing. So we have four different kinds of filing types, so you should see a smattering of all of them, depending on how frequently your agency files. So permanent, temporary, a notice, and then the new filing type is a minor correction. So they're all in here and they're all viewable. So we'll just click on one of these permits just to take a look. So you can see what the rules coordinator submitted. And here's just a very brief look at the permit that we'll get into in a future video. So right now we're just going to return to dashboard. But anytime you see a view, you can definitely print if you need it. So that's just a quick look here at your dashboard as a rules writer.